Let's talk about Ethiopia. For a long time, it was seen as one of Africa's big success stories. With a booming economy and a charismatic leader who won the Nobel Peace Prize. But right now, things are looking really bad. The conflict between the government and Tigray rebels is escalating. A civil war fueled by ethnic divisions has been going on for a year. The front lines keep shifting, and there has even been talk that the fighting could reach the capital, Addis Ababa. There are reports of massacres, sexual violence, and accusations that food is being used as a weapon of war by all sides. There is you know, something like 20 million Ethiopians who are in need of some form of, of aid at the moment. So who's fighting who? And what are they fighting about? Let's start with the big picture. Ethiopia is about the size of France and Spain combined. It has the second biggest population in Africa, with lots of different ethnic groups. There's a federal government based in Addis Ababa, led by Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. And there are 11 regions. They're mostly divided according to different ethnic groups, and each region has its own government. Tigray, way up north, is where most of the fighting has been happening over the past year. It's led by the Tigray People's Liberation Front, the TPLF. Now all this started because of a power struggle between the TPLF and the federal government, but it's gone way beyond that now. The TPLF has been working to destabilize the country, committing many acts that threaten the unity of the people and the sovereignty and existence of the country. He's been doing everything in his power to make sure that the people of Tigray uh, continue to find themselves at the receiving end of his uh, genocidal campaign. Now we've moved into a phase where both sides believe that they are fighting an existential struggle for their survival. What you have to understand is the TPLF used to run things. They dominated Ethiopia's national politics for nearly 30 years as the main party in a coalition government, although Tigrayans only make up 6% of the population. It was a time of huge economic growth, but the TPLF were also accused of being autocratic and corrupt. In 2018, huge protests brought them down and swept Abiy Ahmed into power. And right after he was elected, he made some big changes. He freed thousands of political prisoners who'd been thrown in jail by the previous government and surprised everyone with a peace deal with Eritrea. That's what he got his Nobel Peace Prize for. He also tried to centralize the government more. He created a new national party that brought together the main ethnic political groups. But the TBLF refused to take part, and they were suspicious of Abe's big plans to open up politics and the economy. There was a sense he was trying to boost the power of the government in Addis Ababa at the expense of the regions. The TPLF believed that Abiy Ahmed was consolidating his power by um, completely um, undermining their legacy. So you had all this political jockeying, and then in 2020, there were supposed to be federal and regional elections, but the government delayed them, saying it was because of COVID. That didn't go down well with the TPLF. They went ahead and ran their election in defiance of federal authority. And this led to a process where the federal government said that Tigray's government was not legal and constitutional, um, and Tigray's government made the same accusation against the federal government. And that's when the fighting started. Forces loyal to the TPLF attacked a government military base in Tigray. Then, Abi sent in troops. At first, government forces had the upper hand. They quickly took control of Tigray's capital, Mekele, and Abi declared victory. But it wasn't over. The TPLF forces kept fighting back. And you also had Eritrean troops joining in. They came over the border in the north to fight on the federal government's side. But by the end of June, and despite Eritrean involvement, there was a complete reversal. The TPLF were back in control of Mekele and most of Tigray. And they didn't stop there. They pushed into the neighboring regions of Amhara and Afar. Then there was another big development, this time in the Aromia region, where there's an armed group called the Aromo Liberation Army, the OLA. They have their own issues with Abi. 
they decided to ally themselves with the TPLF, which means now you've got a kind of opposition alliance that wants to defeat Abe. Several groups from other regions say they've joined too. The OLA are fighting from the south and the Tigrayans from the north, and they both say they're determined to push towards the capital. Now, when the TPLF forces took control of two strategic towns in late October, that threat suddenly looked pretty serious. But by early December, the government said its forces had recaptured those towns. So the military balance seems to be shifting again. It seems to be a pretty fluid situation. There's huge amounts of mobilization on the federal side, including the prime minister going to the battlefield himself. So that's how the fighting has played out so far. But what about the civilians? Well, it's been devastating and brutal. All sides involved have been accused of atrocities. Airports have been attacked, uh, schools, uh, hospitals, church, mosques, in addition to unlawful killing, uh, execution, uh, torture, and the huge number of uh, you know, sexual, sexual and uh, gender-based violence. More than two million people have been forced to leave their homes to escape the fighting. There are estimates that hundreds are dying every day in Tigray because there isn't enough food. And the UN says millions are at risk of starvation. This boy is a victim of what the UN says is the world's worst hunger crisis. Only a trickle of food has been getting through, nowhere near what's needed. Both the government and TBLF forces are accused of restricting aid deliveries into areas they control. There have also been reports of horrific massacres, like in Aksum, a town in Tigray, where Eritrean forces killed hundreds of people, according to Amnesty International. And in Mai Kadra, another town in Tigray, where up to 600 civilians were reportedly killed. <laughs> Witnesses later said that forces linked to the TPLF were responsible. There is a threat of incredibly serious consequences from this Ethiopian civil war in the form of famine, potentially, genocide, potentially, state collapse, potentially. To end the fighting, what Ethiopia really needs is some kind of negotiated settlement. But right now, there's no sign that anyone is willing to come to the table, let alone make any concessions. If you found that useful, we have loads more explainers on the Start Here playlist on Al Jazeera's YouTube channel. Check it out.